I'm Fiona Marshall. So I'm from the University of Sussex and also the ESRC-funded uh, STEP Centre. I'm going to get, try and give you a, a fairly quick sort of whistle-stop tour through, through, <laughs> through our project, which, uh, as Paul said, is one of the 2013 uh, set of projects, so we're, we're just nine or ten months in. Um, we... Oh, let's get this thing working. There we go. Uh, like everybody else, we've got a fairly large team. Uh, they're very, very interdisciplinary. Um, and I think, uh, you know, I'm going to do my best to try and sort of represent the project and, the, and, and bearing in mind that there are various aspects of it that members of the team know far more about than I do. And we're lucky we've got three of, three of my colleagues uh, here today who might be able to help out at the stage of questions and things. Um, I mean, just in terms of the team, and I think to, put, to pick up uh, a little bit on, on, on what Steve was saying I think at the end of the last session, was I think it is really, really important to us to think about documenting that process of those interdisciplinary links and, 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 and thinking about our, our kind of legacy for that as well. So I just wanted to kind of, kind of flag that up, and, we, and we're, we're looking at that in, in, in the context of the various groups that we're working with and trying to build interdisciplinary links in JNU and new interdisciplinary partnerships, which is, a, which is a sort of key sort of, I suppose, added value, I think, of our ESPA research. And we're trying to look at that in the context of a series of other projects that we're doing as well. Um, so, whoops, I was going to do that. There we go. So just in terms of trying to... I'll get this right. She told me if I stood here, it was going to work. Got to start completely. Oh, there we go. Okay, so um, in terms of just sort of thinking about where we sort of we think our research is kind of positioned within a kind of broader set of policy agendas, I think I mean, it's very clear now that international and national uh, various doc documents and proposals that sustainable urbanisation, things that come under the banner of sustainable urbanisation or resilient cities. Uh, there's, there's masses of stuff around in terms of debates and statements, but I think we can all pretty much agree that in practice there are lots and lots of kind of multiple, very fragmented interventions, often based on, on, on sort of dealing with a crisis, cleaning up a problem. Um, and, and, and alongside that, of course, in India, we've got this idea of sort of 100 new smart cities, which try and sell themselves under a sustainability agenda quite often as well. Um, and I think that, that, that we're, we're in that space of saying, well, actually, if you unpack any of these, they're not necessarily positive for enhanced environmental integrity or social justice, and very, very rarely, rarely bring the two together. And now what we're trying to do, that's, that's a huge space. So what we're trying to do is carve out a part of that to try and illustrate some of these issues. Um, and so our, the space that we're, we, we, we're working in is this idea that in order to develop sustainable cities, you need to take much closer attention to ecosystem services perspectives in, in peri-urban areas. Now, there's big debates about what, how people define peri-urban areas, and I've lost that slide. <laughs> there's another one back. Never mind. I'll, 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 that's fine. Um, so for the purposes of this work, we're, we're looking at peri-urban as, as where you've got sort of side-by-side -side urban and rural activities and or institutions. So it doesn't mean we haven't got a sort of administrative boundary framework about it. It's much more about sort of process and institutions and activities. Sorry, next one, please. <laughs> okay. Um, and we've done quite a bit of work on peri-urban areas, as, as others have too, and I think there's you know, sort of some core kind of binding characteristics of uh, peri-urban areas and make them fascinating places to work in. And also, I think, really key hotspots in terms of, uh, you know, sustainability debates. There is, you know, where people are adapting to to sort of core environmental challenges where we can learn, I think, a lot about adaptation, for example, to climate change and the way that people are dealing with this very rapid environmental change in peri-urban areas. And as, um, as, as we run through the presentation, we'll see examples of this, but the key areas, are areas we're concerned about are informality, the fact that it's neither urban nor rural, so it falls between administrative stools. There's a lot of contestation over land use, there's massive environmental degradation, there's increasing social exclusion and access deficit, but alongside that, a huge amount of set of local innovation, which I think we, we, we can learn from. Next one. <laughs> um, and then, so, so we've got the idea of sort of peri-urban areas supporting urban sustainability or the need to, marry, to, to manage peri-urban areas in, in a better fashion to support urban sustainability. But within that, what we're trying to do then is look at the role of, 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 of sustainable urban food systems. 
So we could pick out the, the peri-urban urban in many contexts, but we're trying to look at this particularly in relation to, to, to urban food systems. And this is, again, because I think we think there's a very nice policy space there. Increasingly, in recent, recent documents, there's all this, this work advocating these holistic city-region-based planning models. Um, so there's an example here that, you know, we need approaches to city-region food systems that ensure food security, contribute to urban poverty eradication, protect the environment, and are integrated into development plans. Um, now, there are some small examples of where that's beginning to happen around the world, but what we'd like to do is actually sort of provide an evidence base and engage in policy dialogue, dialogue which shows how perhaps you might think about land use planning in a way such that you would integrate urban and peri-urban agriculture into the, uh, into the planning process. So we agree, in a sense, as a project team, we've got this very kind of normative agenda, in a sense, that we, 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 as far as we're concerned, the incorporation of agriculture into city region planning we, we will be beneficial in terms of urban food security, poverty alleviation, and wider ecosystem services. Now, we're, we're happy to be uh, attacked on that. We're happy to debate it, but that, that's our kind of starting point. So in, all, in order to work towards this, then obviously you need to recognize agricultural-related ecosystem services and the, and, and the potential to manage them. Next one, please. <laughs> Sorry, I've given up on this thing. <laughs> um, so there we are. I mean, so we're working in this, this peri-urban space here. We're trying to unpack these dynamics between peri-urban poverty alleviation and ecosystem services, particularly, but particularly the interactions as they, as, as, as they relate to, to urban food security outcomes. And then this is a sort of classic ESPA diagram around the edge, which shows that governance and policy processes are crucial to us and how ecosystem uh, values affect ecosystem management. <laughs> um, now, this is the bit we've been sort of, we're still kind of grappling with as a sort of next phase of our conceptual framework. So we've been looking at a way which will guide us through this process of linking the ecosystem services with the poverty dimensions. Because I think we, it's, a, it's a challenging thing to kind of focus that. And so what we've done is we've kind of used a food security framework which unpacks food security under these three dimensions of food utilization, food access, and food availability. And then what we're able to do then is as we, as we look at the, the, the role of urbanization processes on ecosystem services and how they impact on the livelihoods of people engaged in agriculture, we can, we can use this as a kind of guiding framework to link us through to the poverty dimensions. We're still playing with it, it's still new, but we're actually quite excited about this as a way of, 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 way of, of, of both understanding our, our, our data, but importantly also engaging with various kind of live policy debates around food security. Um, Okay, so very quickly then, the sort of core objectives are a summary of them. The first one is to prove, improve understanding of the impacts of urbanization on peri-urban ecosystem services, but those related to agriculture, and the associated implications for food security and multiple dimensions of poverty. Then, as I say, we're trying to sort of lie, uh, tie in with a lot of sort of current policy debates. So what, what we've do, the way we're trying to do that is to look at current policy initiatives which, which come under the banner of food security or environmental management and look at what they, they might, how they would look if you recast them with an ecosystem services and poverty alleviation kind of lens. And we're using the empirical data we get, we get to help us inform that process. Um, and then the last one is about developing specific methodologies and pathways for impact, which ultimately promote uh, the idea that you need to ma engage with the management of the uh, peri-urban ecosystem services into, in, into urban planning. Um, so, how are we going to do that? Well, we basically, I'm going to be very quick. How, how am I doing for time? Have I already used that five? Oh, oh crikey, okay, right. <laughs> um, okay, so how are we doing that? So, we've got, we've got a combination of quite sort of detailed community participatory work, which is combined with some biophysical measurements. We're doing a lot of participatory mapping, photo mapping, uh, uh, interviews with communities, close engagement with communities. And then alongside that, we've also got this kind of what we're calling, I don't like the term top-down, but the top-down sort of spatial analysis, um, what we can do with readily available secondary data in mapping and spatial analysis. So the idea is that those kind of you know, fit with different layers of the policy-making process. We engage with, we engage with stakeholders uh, using both of those and, and also see to what extent the two speak to each other. So what sorts of... Uh, ecosystem poverty alleviation links can we get which, which help to inform a kind of top-down mapping process. Um, then we've got a second work strand which I think I won't spend time on now but it's, but it's using the data that's coming from that first strand to lead, it, lead into to potential interventions for enhanced ecosystem service management in peri-urban areas. Um, so the ecosystem services we're focusing on, you won't be surprised that those related to food production, so particularly food, water, soil, and fodder, although we're picking up the other ones as, as, as they are important and relevant as we, as we work with the communities. Um, 
Where are we working? Well, we're working in two empirical case study sites in the, in the Delhi National Capital Region. Um, so one is actually in central Delhi, but, it, but you'd call it a peri-urban area. It's an agricultural area on the banks of the Yamuna River. So for, by our definition of peri-urban, it's peri-urban. It's a very important area in terms of uh, vegetable production for the city. The other one is outside of the Delhi National Capital Territory, but in the planning region, which is important, uh, in, in, in Ghaziabad, which is a much more sort of highly industrialized built-up area where small pockets of agriculture have, have survived, if you like. And then we're also working in five other, five other South Asian cities, but it's kind of sort of course of scale as a kind of reference point to create a, a, a regional dialogue. Um, yeah, move on, please. <laughs> um, so this is just a picture of the Yemen case study site. I'm not going to focus on that one today, but just to say it's, you know, it's an incredibly important vegetable production area, mainly migrant farmers coming in farming, very little support, but crucially important in terms of certain aspects of the urban food security picture. Thank you. Um, and this is the one that I'm going to focus much more on for the next few minutes. So this is Carrera Village and the Ghaziabad site, as I say. And we've, got, we've got small pockets of agriculture surviving in a, in a situation where industries have been re relocated from the central Delhi into this peri-urban area. And this is an old traditional village. Thank you. <laughs> um, so in terms of the work that we're doing at the Carrera site and also in the Yamuna Bank site, obviously we're working with peri-urban agricultural communities. We've got a team who've been working out there. They're looking at the interactions between urbanization uh, and associated ecosystem service change on multiple dimensions of poverty, agricultural activities and associated food system outcomes. And then also closely working alongside them, we've got the policy team who are looking in some detail at the institutional context and the governance arrangements. And I think it is important to say, I think for this project, there's a whole set of issues around diverse framings, values of systems, and particularly the politics of knowledge in negotiating change in peri-urban areas is kind of a, a crucial aspect of what we're doing as well. Thank you. Uh, so Carrera site, I mean, so we start, again, it's a sort of contrast between the official panic planning picture of Carrera, if you like, and then working more closely with the community. It's gone very fuzzy uh, to understand what's happening on the ground. Thank you. Um, so a whole set of exciting activities going on. This is quite recent work. The last sort of two or three months, big flurry of activity. We're going to carry on. So some really nice stuff in terms of playing with participatory mapping techniques and seeing what sort of information we can get out on ecosystem services and a whole range of other uh, uh, qualitative methods. Thank you. <laughs> um, and then the key thing here really is that we're using the, 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 the I mean, it's not a new thing, 2007 Chambers Web of Poverty, but it helps us to, to draw out a whole range of poverty-related issues and, have, and, and draw on discussions about how the changes re result from urbanization have impacted on these key dimensions of poverty. Now, the key thing for us then is to, is to use those to then work out whether we, how we can look at those through a, for a food, food security, ecosystem services, and poverty lens. Um, again, very much work in pro process, but, but very, really rich data coming out of this, this, this web of poverty idea. Thank you. <laughs> um, I probably will quickly skip over these, but, but the, I think w one of the sort of key features in the Carrera areas, I mean, you know, people say that people just sell off their land, land in peri-urban areas because the land's, uh, you know, of high price. Well, there's all sorts of issues with that, not least that, that, that people think they're selling themselves land off for high price. The land's acquired by the government, but in practice, there are still, you know, serious, very long-term things going on where people have effectively been terribly ripped off in terms of land. And you do find that about 30% of people are staying in, staying in agriculture, even in Carrera. Um, but there's a, a change in the diversity of the crops that they've grown. Uh, there, there's a sort of mixture of issues around uh, yields increasing, sometimes yields increasing because they're being forced, for example, to use domestic wastewater for irrigation. So uh, it's a positive on one hand, but on, on a, from another aspect of food security, of course, you've got a whole set of challenges over, over food safety. So you can, you can imagine as you unpack this kind of food security uh, table, you get a really sort of fascinating set of interactions, uh, interactions coming out. Thank you. Um, uh, there's a big feature about the challenge of water um, and, 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 and the change in water. And I think one of the fascinating things from a peri-urban point of view is that uh, this is an area where official water supply came in. And when the official water supply came in, a lot of the traditional practices and ways of managing water uh, fell away. And now the, tradition, and now the, the, now the new supply of water is te terribly contaminated, not least because industries are pumping their water into the, uh, sorry, pumping their polluted water directly into the ground. And, uh, and yet they don't have the traditional forms to fall back on. So this is one of these kind of interesting sort of dynamics you get in these peri-urban areas. Thank you. Um, um, so long, how long have I got? Two minutes. 
Um, so uh, alongside that, then we're also working very closely with the community to look at the various very complex uh, governance and administrative and policy arrangements which, which relate to that and the ways in which these local communities somehow kind of are managing to negotiate to survive in this very sort of complex uh, set of arrangements where actually they're, you know, they're just missing. There is nobody who takes responsibility for the core things which are important to the peri-urban poor. There's lots of people who are responsible for little bits of it. Um, uh, so... And we're just trying to look for those key entry points, really. Thank you. Um, uh, here's some examples of areas where, where you know, we're, we're interested in the debate. Um, so here in, 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 the, in Carrera, they're building a city forest. And the city forest, again, is one of these things that comes under an environmental banner. But in practice, what they've done is that they've closed that off from access to the local farmers. They can't get in. Um, and so you're reducing grazing. You've got no farmland. They're also using masses of water. To, to water these trees, which there, of course, then is not available to the local community. And so if you turn that on its head and look at it from a food security point of view and a different perspective, why do you not use that land as a, 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 to preserve the agricultural area and use it as a sort of allotment public agricultural space? So there's lots of advantages there. Um, I'll skip that one as well, thank you. <laughs> so, um, I just wanted to quickly flag up that, 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 that alongside this, of course, we have got this top-down mapping going on. The team have been very, working very hard at the five cities, working out a ma methodology for mapping ecosystem services in these very fast-changing peri-urban areas. It's not, a, it's not an easy thing to do. <clears throat> so we've got some initial maps. Which I just, quickly, I get, just want to get to the last couple of slides. Um, so land use, land cover maps, which we're going to change, we will be sort of converting into ecosystem service maps uh, in Delhi and in the five cities. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's a very interesting way of changing slides. Um, yeah, we'll flip through. And I apologize to my colleagues that have worked incredibly hard on this over the last few months. I'm going to have to flip through. Um, okay. Um, so then, important thing to say then with all that data, that what, one of the things that we are doing in this project is trying to take our sort of pathways to impact work quite seriously. So right early on in the project, we brought, we brought in the project team and a range of other stakeholders to think about our pathways to impact, both at a very local level in the village, but also, what, also in terms of how we might influence national policy making process in the longer term. And we realize that we're, you know, we're a tiny project in this picture, but we'd like to see how we're, it's about how we're situated and how we might link up with other local groups who might work with us for a sort of longer-term policy influence. Thank you. Um, um, yeah, and, and one of the things we do that is, is we begin to map out sort of who we think might be receptive to our messages and who might not, um, and what the power relations are between the various organizations involved. And we amend that. We come back and revisit it, amend it as, as the project goes on, which is quite an interesting, because it's a very fast-moving policy environment. So these, when you digitize them, they're quite useful. It's a funny combination of doing stuff sort of with bits of paper, but then having a role. I'm nearly there, I promise you. Um, uh, so then, okay, so in terms of pathways to impact, yeah, I mean, we, you know, we're working with local groups who are already concerned with some of these environmental challenges and, and, and highlighting issues. We have this whole set of work around flows of risk. So the idea that, uh, you know, you think you're dealing with an environmental challenge in terms of urbanization, but often you're just shifting it, you're shifting the risk in time and space, and importantly, you're shifting the risk in terms of uh, social groups as well. Uh, this dialogue around recasting existing policy initiatives is an important one to us and engaging with policymakers and planners in doing that. Uh, and the, our last one is, a, is, a, <laughs> fine. Um, is trying to, at the higher level, try, trying to sort of re, uh, um, uh, set up a regional ecosystem service group, which is, which is an activity that's led by uh, Priyani, my uh, IMI colleague who's, who's here, who's looking at the role of these kind of maps. 